All right, y'all. It's the time of the day that you've been waiting for. It is the one show on air that will take you from the boardroom to the bedroom, from politics to the pulpit and everything in between with your favorite friends. You are about to join the crew for Fresh Fire as we do what we do all together. Tune in. Welcome to the crew. Here on WHOV, we're on all social media platforms. Thank you for checking us out. Whether you're checking us out on the radio or on our podcast, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, we are here. And guess what? We in the man cave, It's in the cave, y'all. We in the cave. It's in the cave. We, we, yes, sir. As you, as you put it, I got my head on backwards. Yeah, you got your head on backwards. Because when we talk back. about some stuff, that's going to miss some people. I'm going to have to yeah. balance y'all out of there. You know, I'm, I'm gonna try to stay a little bit middle in the road. Then maybe you should have got over there. Yeah, <laughs> you, you ain't. You, you, yeah, 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 you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but for yeah. those who can't see us, uh, the ladies aren't here today. Right. Nah. It's just the fellas. We just free fellas. today, man. We got some things we gonna talk we about gonna today. Talk about some stuff. Yeah. And uh, I'm just glad that we are here. Let's, let's give a quick shout out to Jason Covington, our producer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What's Always up? holding What's down. Up, dude? Doing a great job. But Tom, you in the building, man? How you doing, man? Man. I've been fighting for my virginity like I was in a prison rodeo. <laughs> it's been that kind of week. <laughs> not your real. In a not prison your real. Rodeo. <laughs> it's been that kind of week. <laughs> yeah. It's been that kind of week. But you know what? It's like y'all know I'm a fighter. Y'all know I'm yeah. a fighter by nature. Right? Yeah. So what do you do when the Lord tells you to shut up and let me fight? Oh my Lord. Today. That's hard for you. That's, that's hard for you. That's, that's where I've no, been. No, I know. That's hard for everybody. I'm going to be with that's hard. But that's where I've been. Because you know I would shank you just to look at you. <laughs> but when the Lord tell you, when the Holy Ghost tell you, be quiet. Be yes. still and know. Be still and know. That's yes. Old Testament time. That's Old Testament. You know I like my Old Testament. <laughs> yes. You know, because I like the Leviticus. Right. And so, but, but, but when he tell you, look at Leviticus, be still. And know yeah. that I am God and watch me be assaulted in yes, the earth. Yeah. You, you about the only one I know that like Leviticus. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I like Mr. You know. Leviticus. You might be the only one. <laughs> I like Mr. Ray Leviticus. Ray Ray in the building, Tom. I'm back Tom, in Ray the Ray in the building, building, man. What's up, Ray Ray? I'm What's up with you, man? Man, so if, 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 if. He is in, you know, running for his virginity. I've got on a straight jacket like I'm inside <laughs> Arkham somewhere <laughs> with the stuff. I've been walking through and dealing with. Got some, got some crazy news about my baby girl getting ready to travel. So, you know, I'm trying to have passports, visas. I'm trying yeah. to figure out if I can go over there and stay with her and be with her while she over there studying abroad right now. So it's tough right now. So, you know, y'all, y'all yeah. pray for your boy. I know about them daddies and daughters, man. Yeah, that, that's man. always you know how hard, we, man. Yeah, bro. You it's, know, it's yeah. a di- we said it before. It's a different kind of love, man. Man, yeah, you know, a it's a different kind of love. Yeah, you got a son, I got a son. so a son Lord. is more of that pride, yeah, that, that, that yeah. Mufasa, yeah. Mufasa, yeah, yeah. 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 But Mufasa, Ray, I know Mufasa. about that. I know about that daddy daughter, man. man. That's hard, man. Yeah, that's hard. You talk about. I'm trying to keep him going to see Tom. Just just put him like that. <laughs> mm, don't and the thing me. is, man, <laughs> don't I, come see I me. ain't gonna tell you about it. That way, I got an alibi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. don't come see me. <laughs> and then look, it's it's double standards too, man. And and it is what it is, man. And and my daughter know it too. Right. It is. It is. And I only had it, Tom. I tell you, double standards. Point. Yeah, yeah, it's you, just you, it is what it is. Yeah, it is, that, it is ain't that. no sense in Jane yet. Yeah. I ain't gonna, ain't gonna she lie get whatever me. she wants. It is what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. what it is. So we're gonna have a good show today, y'all. I'm excited about it. It's the man cave today. Yeah. We thank y'all for tuning in. We're gonna take a quick break right here. We got a fire show today. Fire. We're gonna pick up from last time and what mm-hmm. we talked about. Hope mm-hmm. you enjoying the show so far. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is the crew on WHOV, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all the platforms. Check us out. Welcome back to the crew, WHOV, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, podcast, all the platforms. We in the man cave today, y'all. Yeah. And, and listen, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, we, we love the ladies. So shout out to Sia and, and Alvin, oh, but they're yeah, not with us like today. But, but the fellas we hear, Ray Ray back. And, and listen, Ray Ray, last week we talked about chivalry, man. Yes. Right, right. We, we talked yeah, about is, right. is chivalry dead. And, <laughs> and we really got some perspective from the ladies about what they think chivalry is, right? Uh-huh. Like, you know, walk through the door. That's good enough. That's what Sia said. But then Alvin said, you know, she liked protection and all that other stuff yeah, you know yeah. still like that kind of stuff but now that they out of the way we can talk 
talking. Real talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we, no disrespect to the to the women. Yes, yes, we, yes, yes. We can have some real stuff. conversations. Right, right, right. right. We about how we feel. How we feel about some stuff. About, yes, about yes, chivalry yes, and yes, how we feel yes. about all of it. So, Ty, you saw something, man, as you always do, man. You know, I always find the content. You do. You okay. content man. I'm content man. And so, you know, I, I was looking to see, you know, what's out there? You know, what what's trending and, you know, what is it that the culture is is discussing at the moment mm. and there was this twitter feed where this young lady it was a caption this young lady she was on her knees and she was a grown woman mm. proposing to a grown man say it ain't so dog. said it so and the caption is ladies would you do this and the feedback was almost unanimous where, you know, women were saying all kinds, you know, they were getting the cuss of this stuff. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, 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 it, it wasn't Christ-like. They were upset about that because they were like, ain't that kind of desperation in the world that will make me uh, propose to a grown tail man? And you know they didn't use the word tail. Yeah. And so, but there are women out there who are proposing to men and there are men out there who are accepting that proposal or are waiting for them to take on more of the dominant role or more of the aggressor in the relationship and it makes you you know have to look at the overall picture and say what's going on in society are we raising a generation of more of effeminate or soft men or males and we're raising a generation of harder women who are Sheesh. more aggressive than men are mm. is that's what's going mm. on there because you talk to most single people they'll tell you it's hard out there in the streets yeah that's the phrase that they'll use it's hard out there in the streets so then all right so if that's the case if, if a sister sees a guy that she like and she know it's hard out here in the streets maybe she don't see nothing wrong with it right but but the body what the Bible says. What the Bible says. What the Bible says. He that finds. That's what I'm saying. That's all right. So let let me just ask y'all this. All right. So we all. I'm just saying. But I'm saying we all married. Okay. Right. All right. So if our wives would have asked us. First, it wouldn't happen. It would have never, never happened. Happen. Let's just say that they did. I can't, you can't, you I can't, can't imagine. I can't how that. would you have responded, though? Matter of fact, let me, let me, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> how would you have responded? Let me Girl, tell get you. Got, let Lord, me I tell you that about camera, Jay. Don Bell. Don Bell, my godfather, approached Don. I, I, I found out that Don was his podiatrist, and by off chance, mm. and I, uh, and, and I was already interested in her, and. He, he had an appointment with her. And I said, yo, dad, I said, hook a brother up, get some info, find out, you know, if she's seeing anybody or, you know, if she's interested or what, just get some intel for me. Some... That Negro went up in there and told her, <laughs> my son, first of all, she asked, did she, know, did she know me? She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she knew who I was and everything. And he, she, he said, well, he is in love with you. He, I mean, put all my stuff out there, put mm. it all out there. Mm. So we'll, and so Anyway, when he finished the conversation, he said, well, will you call him? She said, oh, no, man. No, sir. She said, I, I will not call him. That's what I'm talking about. Because she don't operate like that. That's she operates in order. That's what I'm Because she was like, I'm not going to chase no man. All right. So let me let me, let me me shift so, to another. So, so, so you, so you got to recognize there's that's a certain it right caliber there. of women. I that's got it. it. I got it. Who, the, who are like, no, no, no. That's if, it if, right if, there. If you want me... You, you gotta, come and get come on, brother. You gotta come correct. But yeah. is that because for the purposes of radio? Okay, for the purposes <laughs> right. of radio. Okay. For the purposes of radio and yeah. podcast, right? Is is that because we were raised in a patriarchal society where male yes males and no. led, and it was the ex- expectation <sighs> that the men makes the choice and the decision. That's a yes and no for me. Go ahead, no time. Go ahead. Go ahead. First I, of I, all, first let of me all. just let me just throw that out there. I, I, hear, I hear that, but Kevin, it's it's not even biblical for a woman to be chasing a man. Talk, well, if we are I know I know we the crew and we no longer the pastor studies, but guess what? We are men of the cloth. Talk. And so if we are going to talk that about real our relationships, that are real we gotta talk about the relationships that we base which is upon the word of God. And if that's the case, you have to look at the fact that God didn't set it up for Eve to chase down Adam. Talk, he brought Adam. 
he brought Eve out of Adam. So, I know that. But, okay, I know you know but that. But a lot of people that we're talking about don't follow the word. Well, right? here's the thing. So, so this is what I'm asking you from a societal perspective. Man. Not what we think. Right? Because we know it should be the man that should lead by example. It should be the man that should approach. But our culture is moving away from the word, man. Okay, you know that. That's okay. part of what the difficulty the, the, is right there. That's part, of, that's part of what the problem is. Our culture has decided to set its own standards for how it wants to do what it wants to do. Right, right. And what we end up with is this backwards response to life where you got women out here who are, first of all, we've done away with the idea of gender roles. So we've done away with the idea of men being responsible, men being accountable, men exercising good stewardship, men having themselves together before they even step to a woman. And we've gotten to the point where we have allowed, and really what it is, is we've allowed too many women, and I, ladies, please, y'all don't crucify me, because some of y'all have raised some good sons as single mothers. You have done an outstanding job my, my uh, right here my with, 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 my with, with my man here, Come on. Uh, Commonwealth Attorney Bell. Now, but on the other side, he will tell you that she put her foot in his rear end to straighten out his spine so that he would be a man. That joke was crazy. And that, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, so the difference is you cannot, and let's just get to where we want to get to. Go ahead. You cannot raise these boys to be, be soft. so soft mm -mm. that they don't know how to handle Sad. their business because at the same time, you got to realize this dude is going to be somebody's father and going to be somebody's provider and somebody's protector. And you can't keep treating him like he's 10 when he's 19. And that's probably what some of the issue is today where you got these young men running around here who are really, really soft in their character, in their nature, in their behavior. Half of them can't even think for themselves unless they got somebody thinking for them. It's crazy out here. That's what the problem is. And Societal standards the, is a problem. The, word, the, way it, I've it heard problem. It, the way I've heard it, if you talk to some of these ladies, they will tell you in a heartbeat, some mothers are raising their nightmare. There you go. Raising their yeah. nightmare. Raising Creating their a problem for the next woman man. thinking that she helping. Yeah. Oh, she God. ain't helping them. Because if you're not preparing him to be the head of his household, to be able to lead in his household, to be able to be a protector in his household, a provider in his household, someone who's going to be able to set standards in his household. Talk. If you're not raising him up to be someone like that, then what you're doing is you are failing him because failing when him. he gets out into the the real world, the real world is not going to care that you are related he to him. He a black man too? He a, come on. And you got to live as a I, black man come out on, here? Y'all ain't coming for me. <laughs> right? Cause I'm with y'all. No, no, but we just but in me, the shop. We just but, in the shop. But, but here's what I'm saying to you, Ray, because you raised daughters. Right. Right? And what you also saying to your daughter is, listen, you know, whether man come into your life or not. Right. You gonna make sure you have your stuff together. There you go. Right. right? You yeah. gonna you gonna have a space. And so right. here's what's happening too, right? Sister, she's she's going to school. Mm -hmm. she, she is getting it, yeah. a job. Talk about she it. She got a nice spot. She got a nice car. She got life together. Yes. Right? Okay. So what's wrong with that? Nothing. Right? But if if so if she's got her life together, right? So so let's and go. Hold there. on, hold on. If she got her life together and she sees something that she won't, right? Because this is what she's been doing. Who's to tell her that that's wrong? So that, that's what's happening in our society so, as well. So, so let me let me let me go there on that point I with with some with some, with some of my some of, some of my own life experience with this. Got you school, got yourself together, out of debt. I got one girl that's all. I mean, she's in her mid twenties talking about buying her first house. I'm helping her through that process right, right. now. And so, and my thing with her is, you can have all of that and put all of that together. Real men will not come to you empty-handed. And it ain't about money and finances. It's about the ability to understand that you bring something to the table. If you manage yourself well, I can put my life in your hands, my assets, my property, and my life purpose in your hands. I see what you've done individually as a woman by yourself. When you get to me, I know what I'm working with. And you need to be patient enough and wait. I don't care if you're 35, but a real man that has been fashioned and formed, we won't even use the godly term, we're just talking about fashion and form by life where he is prepared. He wants you. And he, by the time he finished, listen, we're in the barbershop, right? Are we in the barbershop? We're in the barbershop. By the time he finished running through everything else, and when he gets still and settled down, he be lining directly to you. But most men struggle with that kind of woman. 
Because they're degree. looking at the fact that you got everything already, right? And and some uh, men, I'm telling y'all, uh, they struggle uh, because they no, ask. Now I got to because, agree with Kevin no, no, on that. No, I because they ask. I agree with, with Kevin no, on that. Hold on, I can't agree with that because that was my life. But that's you. That was my you life. Now you are an anomaly, though. You are an anomaly, huh? Dude, I was born and raised in the hood. You exception to the rule. Born and raised in the hood. He's an anomaly. He's an anomaly. Went to school and went got my education. But my wife, you know, she. Was raised in in the in the in the, in the country, and you know went to school. She had her own crib, but when we got married, matter of fact, that's where we moved into, and then we built together to get you know where yeah. we are today. Yeah, but we had a plan. We had a financial plan. Yeah, the plan to get out of debt together, and we worked that plan where we were debt free. Yeah, literally debt free before we bought this last house. So it's like you have to have someone. Who is confident in who they are? And they most men are not. That's the well, problem, Tom. Is that? And that's why you exception to the rule. Well, and this is what I'm saying. Is that? Some of these well, that's women what we need to are talk not about. A fashioning and forming these boys to be competent. Well, well, well forget about the women, because see, what I don't want to do is we bash. Not we well, ain't well, bashing. Well, 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 sure, we well, I want to make sure our audience know this. I got you. Go ahead. And I want to make sure Go our ahead. audience know because the sad part about this entire conversation is we're talking about mothers. When the truth of the matter is, it's the father that has failed. Yeah. But because that Negro is absent most times. <laughs> and because that Negro it hit that woman, knocked her up, and moved on to the next one. Right. Got about five kids in the same city. They don't even know each other. Or Never he, met each other. Or he saw you. Or he, or he saw you or your neighbor. Come on. And, and, <laughs> and, he, he, he skipped the meeting right, coming right. to us. He skipped the meeting yeah, coming yeah, to yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, we're addressing <laughs> the mom because um, the unfortunate part is the dude, the father who should be setting the sentence example should be setting the standard yes. should be teaching yeah, his duh. kid yeah. his son how to be a man yeah he ain't there yeah so that's he my absent. question so that's my point you raised the point that a that a woman proposed to a man yeah right yeah. so if if the if the, if there haven't it. been an example of how it's supposed to be done right if if we're not showing our boys how to be men and providers and protectors and right. how to lead right why wouldn't he Except, except a proposal from a, I, a I, woman. I, I, when there ain't been no I, other, he ain't seen anything. I'll else. agree with, but there's still something I'm not in agreeing, you. I'm not agreeing with you. Something in I'm you as okay. Let's you. go here. I'm not agreeing with you. Some in you as a male that is aspiring to to be something and do something with your life. So what male have I seen? You are not going. That's an intrinsic thing. What male us. have I seen Swamp. that shows me that's how to do that? That's an intrinsic thing that's, that's the, in us key. to that's be the key. aggressive enough. Because men that's are visual. To, we are visual. Yeah, that's we are visual. So, so what that's have I right seen there. that that's shows me that's what I'm supposed to do? That's the key right I there. Now, now, because now, how do I know how to behave? Well, how do I know how to behave or how do I know how to handle a situation like that if I've never seen, seen real men, real mature men, they real know, responsible they men, no woman men supposed who to are be head of the household. No man. Correct. If I don't know that, then how am I supposed to respond to that in an appropriate fashion? So, Ton, in your household growing up, your mom handled business. She handled business. Right? She, had she to. took care of everything, she right? She had to. And, and she took care of you and your brother. She did. Right? So... If I don't, if I'm not in the word, and I see that my mama is the only one that's handling business, then you think that the women why would the it ones? be out of the ordinary for her to propose? So let me tell you what she did do, though, because she knew she couldn't truly raise a man. There you go. She knew that she can give me all of the attributes and the characteristics yeah. that I needed that she could give, but as far as how to be a man, she ain't a man. Yeah. So what she did do is she put me around godly men. There you go. Men who were husbands, men who were fathers, men who had careers, men who were out there hoeing around <laughs> with everything. Cause let me just tell you, just for the for the viewers. Every oh, I tell my mentees that every open pair of legs and an open invitation for you. You need right. to talk mean, right there. Come on. You so need to which talk means right that uh, and, and for 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 the ladies who's who's like you said she got it all together and she sees something that she wants because you see it don't mean you need it. There you go. Because you see it doesn't mean you need it. Sometimes you need to thank God that he didn't give you everything you asked for. <laughs> because if he had given you everything you asked for, you'd be in some crazy house right now. You talking. I'm telling you, we need 
need to be able to exercise some level of discretion and good judgment. Yeah, and dog. that's the problem. That's it. People are not exercising good judgment. Yeah. Yeah. As a female, if I was a female and had it going on, ain't nowhere on God's green earth would I get down on a knee and propose to some Negro in this country. <laughs> it ain't happening. It just ain't happening. That's you. I don't care. It, it may just be me. It's, it's, it just may just be me. I just I'm may tell you, I'm let, let, let me tell you about Adam Tash Johnson. So, you know, it's, it's, it's clear. Everybody know I was pursuing her. And we get married later in life. She ain't want nothing. She won't thinking about me at all. And made me date her to see if how consistent I was going to be. See, ladies, you have the power to set the standards. She took her time. So you can't rush into stuff. You so and, and let me just go here because I'm a father of girls. Get rid of this myth of your biological clock. It is a real thing, but children are gonna come when God sends them. He, they going to be here when God sends them. So th stop getting into this whole rush. I got to have, I got to have, I got to have, I got to have. That practicing that delayed gratification is important because it will ensure that you have some insurance and get some insurance about the other side. But it will ensure some, that you have some, an insurance policy. blessed insurance. Get some real insurance. Get some real insurance. <laughs> insurance. <laughs> but it will ensure that some there is insurance. something some that insurance. will last after the night is over. Listen, man. Yeah, look, I, I'm not disagreeing with any of this, but but Jake said it best. There are ideals and then there are realities. Okay. All right. Ideally, the man should propose. We all agree to that. Right. Right. But the reality is we all hear the same stories about these sisters. Yeah. It's hard out here. You said that, right? Mm -hmm. It's an economics issue. Right. Yeah. It's a scarcity issue. Yeah. Right. Numbers. If Numbers. I'm a man and I'm single, take church out of this for a minute. Okay. If I'm a man in this generation and I'm single and I know it's a scarcity issue, I got my pick of the litter. Yeah, you do. And that's why I said they pimping. I right got my now. pick of the litter. So, but do, do I, I need? What, what, so, say that. Do I want? If I ain't been taught nothing else, what else do I know? When society and the music tells me to run women, when I look at the culture and it tells me to run women, what incentive do I have to slow down? Okay, so I, it, I, have, a, I have a mentee. I have a mentee who is. They a, don't care about that? Well, yeah, they don't because they. STDs like, at an all time. They take a shot. They take a shot. Or they take a whole bunch of pills. Syphilis is running like through babies like never before. Through babies like Lord, it's at an all time mercy. high. Y'all cannot just, hit me with that. CDC just said syphilis. The CDC just said. They just released it. Just released it. They said an all time high for babies getting syphilis. And I'm like, you these, got to be kidding me. And nobody care. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody care. So you running through multiple partners, getting people impregnated, and your babies are the ones coming out the womb suffering, suffering. as a result. Because syphilis in, in the womb can cause blindness Blind. to the baby. Sure can. So, blindness. Yeah, so the baby is coming out with no vision. And that's spiritual and natural. Natural, right yeah. there. No vision. Yeah. That's that's something right there. It you is. So, and, and you we, so desperate. Now no, we gotta go you here. So whorish. Well, it's both. It's, ahead, it's, it's it both that. You so whorish that you will propose to, like Tom said, an ignorant Negro. That you will get on your knees as a woman and you gonna propose to some man. Well, there's some brothers that propose to some ignorant sisters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they should have got up. Yeah, they should have got up. They should have kept going. They should have kept going. But they got caught up. But they got caught up. But they got caught up. So, so again, look. Lord, I, mean, I wish we could talk for real. If, if the issue is that <laughs> the got woman baptized. got down on her knee, that that we're saying that are we saying that it's the gender role issue that's messed up in our in the culture? No, no, no. It's not a gender role for me. For me, is general issue how it's like how. I would not, as a man, okay, take church out of it. Let's just say, just as a man, my pride would, that, would just that's what bother I'm saying. me. So I'm going to go back to you again. That's if, what I'm saying. If, and I know we can't imagine it because in our day, none of our women would ever do it. No, but no. For the purposes of this show, if. I, 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 I can hear. I can hear some of, if, of the, the, of I'm the hearing, sisters. Right, I'm hearing them. Yeah. Right now, I can hear them. Like I can hear the Christian say, women and non-Christian Christian women are using say, choice words yes. right now. Let me tell y'all something. <laughs> yeah. Listen, All of them using listen, choice words yes. right now. Listen, if God forbid, God forbid, anything were to happen to our wives, all yes. right, let's put that on the table. Yeah. And we were back on on in the market. I ain't getting married again. 
Get yeah. me back in the market. I ain't getting married. Are you saying that you don't believe nobody going to step to you? Are you saying nobody going to step to you? They, they want, want to. to. But I'm saying I'm never getting married again. Because <laughs> guess what? Marriage is work. And I have invested quite a bit That's into that marriage. That's not what I meant. Whether, and so guess what? I, no, no, I'm too I, old I, I know to the try question to do that. Kevin Here's is what asking. I'm asking you. I'm not asking you whether you would get married. I'm asking do you think that if any any of us were on the marketplace, God, let me answer like you Jamal don't think Brian nobody would step to you. I'm not saying nobody would step to me. Let me answer like Jamal Bryan answered when somebody asked him that question. He said, well, "You ain't I'll, never got to worry about me in Atlanta because HIV is real positive in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> you may be another city, but not in Atlanta." Well, yes, he did. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> But and y'all didn't answer my question. Maybe not here so, in Hampton Roads. So, so our numbers so, are just as high. Well, look, let me. <laughs> this is a yes or no question. Do okay. you think that somebody would step to you? They can step to me all they want to, but it doesn't mean I have to accept it. Right. Just like the man didn't have to accept the sister proposing. Right. Yeah, and and, and the story never said whether he accepted it or not. It Correct. did not. It did not say that. Right. It did not say that. It, it just say that. said that she got down that on, she her, she knee. Got down on, on knee. her knee. And now we all up in arms because we think that's supposed to be our role. Well, the truth of the matter is, hey, hey get up in arms. The majority of the people, people who responded were women. We feel in some type of way. Come on now, we y'all. Do, yeah, we, we, we do, do feel some type do, of way. Ain't no question you, about that. The sisters crucified that lady. Yeah, they did. The sisters crucified her because the sisters felt like it was an insult right. for uh, for her to have to lower herself to a man who didn't think she was worthy enough to propose, to, propose her to her versus she having to propose to him. So because, they saw it as an insult to her. Because the pattern is if you always, if you propose to him the future is you always gonna have to take the lead on stuff for stuff to get done in your Man, house. You better say that again. See, that's what that's where it come down to. You better you, say you, it again. You, you, but if you telling me that a lot of these men are used to women taking the lead, yeah. And if you're telling me that they're not trained to lead or Go be talk to the, the, the protector women. or the advisor, so what, we need, what I'm hearing, what we need is a part three, so, so that the, so that the women can talk about how real women do want real no. men to lead. Hold on, let y'all circling. Let's just go ahead on this, put it on out there. Go ahead, y'all circling. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. There is a whole slew of jokers out there. I'm talking about dudes that's out there that's slinging it everywhere they can sling it. And you got women that's falling in love with that head instead of the other head. And that's the problem. <laughs> I was trying to not I'm, do I'm the not word play with ties. It. I'm just going to go I, ahead I and say it. I can't put the other word in love. I'll say it this way. They were ties. No, no well, I'm just saying. They, they <laughs> gigolos or whatever y'all want to call them, but they're out there. Cause that, how you have dudes that got four and five and six babies being born within months of each other. You remember that 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 show we did where the dude had like 32 kids yeah. and many of them were in the yeah. same grades and he he took a picture yeah. of, of, of all the kids together and it was all these baby mamas. I mean it was a whole slew of baby mamas. Yeah. And and people were like, well if he can afford it, what's wrong with that? And I'm like, you saw him. ignorant is all get out. Well polygamy is on the rise again. It ain't in our polygamy. Time. What it is is lawlessness. The Bible says in the last days. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be eight men to one woman. Well, you we can... talked about Nick Cannon too. We said that that same discussion, yeah, but yeah. but but Todd, it's two parts. So one is again, it's economics, right? I I'm most men take God out of this. Yeah, I got you. If I can do that, why wouldn't? I? Why wouldn't I? I, I so I just... so where are the standards on the other side and say, you know what, I'm not going. So so that's that's part of this too. That you know, if she letting him in, he coming on in. Right, that's just where that is. I, I guess. And what, if you know my history, right, you already know how many you already kids know I what got. It is. You already know that half my check going yeah. to child support. You yeah. already know all this ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. That's if the you problem. still, problem. but I your mean, check is going. That's first of all. <laughs> let's just keep it real. These jokers ain't paying no child support, correct? Because they come to see me and they going to jail yeah. because they ain't got no jobs. What as soon and as a lot child, of these women are not taking them down. As put soon them as there. child support find yeah. out where they working, they quit that job. Yeah, and then they go find something else. <laughs> and and I'm t- I had a cousin who was like that. Every time he had about eight kids, and as soon as child support found him and found j- where he was working, he would quit that job. So he stayed in jail. Yeah, he stayed and so in jail. and so if. If, and I hear all these stories. I got, I got We got them in the church. Ray, I know you got some yeah, of yours. Yeah. Where sister getting up every morning. Going to she work. going to work. And the he dude down on the, the couch. The dude on the couch. Chill. Watching TV, eating the food. Ain't going to work. Ain't doing nothing. 
and basically be like, I, I'll see you when you get back. No, I know. The, the worst is go to a Walmart on the first of the month. Ooh, no, you didn't do that. We're going to go right there. You did not do that right and there. And you will see an old girl and him. She will have one basket with a couple of kids in it, and they will have food items in that basket. And then he will have bas- a basket with things that you can't buy with food stamps. Right. <laughs> And it would be beer and all that yeah, other stuff that talking. you came by with, and and they and they go to the line together. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've seen. I'm telling. You, I went one time. It was a couple of years ago. I was in a Walmart, and I said I would never go to another store on the first of the month because that thing broke my heart. Not from a judgment standpoint, but just how did we get here? What can we do to change this? I was going to say, is it possible? I don't, what I, can we do yeah. to change this? Because I'm like, is it I possible? know. Like, like, and then you would see certain, I would see certain moms, and I could look at them and see they're tired. Yeah. And I'm like, they don't want to be in this state. No. You know, I'm like, how can we help that person to come out of that situation? But then when you see, so you see her, and, and your heart just go out to that person, but then you see the other one on the other flip of that coin, and she's just like, seemed like she just, embracing the situation with her 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 boo that she booed up with and this joker got on a wife beater he looked like the bottom of your shoe <laughs> and yet he the said only the thing that he shoe. can contribute to her is what's between his legs and that's it and it probably ain't all that so the real question is why is she why is she accepting that why is she accepting that so and and Economics. this is this is where I want to go back to um cuz you don't need him he said economics. She it's, don't need him. Not, she economic, got not the economics in terms of monetarily. She economics got the jack. and economics, not economics monetarily. Companionship, companionship economics. economics. I'd rather be alone. And I, well, Tom, listen, man, that's, that's, the com- that's the conversation I've had with so many Several. women that, that listen sorry. in the church. You got a choice. Either you can trust God for mm-hmm. the one that God sends you, mm-hmm. or you can settle. Can I tell you something? Because I know you took God up. Can I put it back in there for just a bit? What people don't realize, and this is what church folks don't realize, the enemy will always send you a counterfeit, counterfeit. before the Lord send brings the, the real, real deal. Yeah. And if you could just be patient enough and discerning enough to understand that if that person that is before you is not what you've been praying for and looking for, that's the counterfeit. Yeah. And if you have enough discipline, that's the dirty deed in the church. Because we don't practice discipline. And self-control. And, and self-control. self-control. That spirit of self-control. That's the last the fruit. fruit. That's, that's the fruit. last fruit. We like love, fruit. joy, and peace. Yeah, we don't get the self control. We don't get the yep. self control because discipline is the dirty D. But if you can walk in that that fruit of self control and 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 be able to say no, that ain't what God has for me because I know who I am and whose I am, and I know He would never bring me someone that will bring me down. The person He's going to bring will be equally yoked with me and will bring me up. We'll go up together. Yeah. And if you can wait on God to bring you the real deal, your bow ass, you will walk in the prosperity that God has for you. But too often we settle for the counterfeit. See, the problem. The problem is with that is is that the discipline long enough for the distance of time, waiting it out four seasons because there are different mood swings that come on people at different times of the year. So I teach singles all the time: summer, winter, spring, fall. There will only be the at least the amount of time before you start really getting intimate and serious with somebody because you got to find out who they are all when seasons. in all those seasons when the stuff really hit the fan. Who are they for real? But we, you know, we we do hot girls summers and hot boy summers and wonder why people start falling back. What did we say before on a show like this before we put we put people on game? Uh, he breaking up with you right before Christmas and not getting back together with you until after Valentine's Day. And so you gotta learn how to wait the seasons out long enough in order for the stuff to even prove whether it's real or not. Real people will be consistent over time no matter what you do. And time reveals all things. All hidden motivations time reveals. Yeah. Look, this is the man cave, right? So, Tom, I want to go back to a question you asked at the beginning of the show okay about are we raising effeminate boys lord today we, we ain't got enough time. are we raising harder girls <sighs> what you say about that oh absolutely oh absolutely uh when you have dudes that don't have any sense of first of all pers- uh, perseverance uh when uh, a, a, a struggle comes they're really just weighed down by it. Like, for instance, when we were growing up, we were, t- my mom made us 
as my brother say, for tough. She instilled in us, look, you gotta be resilient because there are gonna be people who will take advantage of you when you are in a low moment. So you can't stay there, have your moment, but don't stay there because Every situation, it's just a season. Mm -hmm. You will get over it. You will make it through that. You just got to be able to persevere through that. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is we see a lot of kids who have gone through a lot of trauma. Yeah. And it has not been addressed. And because it has not been addressed, it has <laughs> broken them down so much mentally and emotionally. And it's not, you know, and the truth of the matter is, it's not their fault. As children, the problem is, at what point talk. do you recognize, you know what? Please I'm talk. not where I need to be mentally and emotionally, and I need to maybe go get some help because now I'm 50 years old and I'm still acting like I'm 10. Talk, right? See, the problem, see, let me ask, let me get on some of That's that. That's a whole other conversation. Let, let me get on some yeah, of that. that. We've extended adolescence way beyond than what it should be extended. And we're not we're not putting in the measures of responsibility and accountability. Training time or, or the discipline is zero to five. You're teaching five to ten, training and mentorship twelve to eighteen. And a lot of times we get those seasons confused and we extend adolescence way into the early twenties. So to the point of what he just said is that um, we were built for it tough. Sometimes we can mistake the a uh, sense of emotional health that we want young people to have for the discipline of developing mental toughness. So I'm t I remember at 21 years old, I think I was 20 turning 21, calling home because it snowed 10 inches while I'm in Maine. Betty Johnson answered the phone and I'm crying. I'm, I'm crying real tears. Mm -hmm. Her words to me were exactly this. She listened to me for five minutes, and then she said, this was a decision you made. You left Virginia Union. You decided to go to Maine. There's a reason why you left Virginia Union. Maine has the money. You decided to go. Your tuition is covered. Don't call me until it's time to graduate. Whoa. And hung up the phone. I know that's right. The University of Maine degree is sitting on my wall, which is the precursor to the rest of the degrees I had. Come on. If she didn't have that tough moment with me, I may not have graduated. And sometimes we don't give kids the tough moment between 12 and 18 to force them to have to deal with their emotions in a constructive way that brings out discipline and shapes character. So I want to make sure we're clear here because when we're talking to feminine, I know there might be some people listening that think that might be leading to sexual orientation. And that's, no, we're not, that's not what that. we're talking about. I, but let's be clear. That. That's not what we're talking about. There's some that. people listening yeah, and they watching. Not, they're going to link uh, effeminate to sexual. So be no, clear in what we you mean. No, no, we, no, we're talking not, about the we strength can, of we character. Can even, we can even take the word effeminate out, out. And, I, and use the word soft. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. Go with that. One. Just make sure that we yeah, understand so, how no, we define it. We're talking about developing a spine and having a backbone and being resilient. Resilient, being resilient and being tough mentally to be able to navigate your way through life. That was, that's what we're talking about. And there were a lot of times, see, I saw this other uh, clip one time, the difference between fathering and mothering. And a lot of our children are mothered and not necessarily fathered. So a mother is always, you, the kid fall down, mother's always going to kiss the boo-boo, kiss the knee. Come on, let me put something on it. Keep put something on it. Child keeps falling, keeps falling, keeps falling. Daddy at some point is going to ask, but why are you falling down? And look, what do we need to do to help you? To help you? Oh, you ain't tying your shoes like you're supposed to. Come in, sit down, let's figure out how to tie the shoes so you can stop falling down and scraping up the knee. Because daddy, in the back of his mind, going, every time we go to the doctor, that's a copay. That's money. <laughs> that's so we're going to save money by helping you understand how to tie your shoe to keep you from falling down. Some people would say, well, that's being insensitive. No. Well, no, you're learning no. how to tie your shoe, and tying your shoe is saving money. Make that application in other areas of life, and that's where we are. So, Tom, to your point of Walmart, first of the month, what you see, to the point of what you saw growing up. If a, if a young boy is in an environment where all he sees every day is women. Uh-oh. You didn't open a can of worms there. How does he not be effeminate? 
Well, here's the thing. Mm. I get the fact that I got he may emulate what he see, mm-hmm. and 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 may even take on cer- certain certain uh, characteristics, and traits, and behavior of what he may see. I get all that, but my point is, at some point, you are going to grow up, and at some point, you are going to be exposed to real men. You're going to be exposed. Like, for instance, I'll give you a perfect example. Like I said, my mom put us around men. But after I left my mom's house, God put me around godly father figures. Yeah, that's good. So he put me around, you know, dads and godparents, God, godfathers and stuff who I could just emulate by just being around them and and watch them in their marriage, see how they handle conflict. I mean, got close up to see things and 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 could see how they 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 dealt with issues and and dealt with finance and and dealt with how, how you think you know I ain't learned finances the way I learned it from the hood. I learned finance by That's being around good. people who had money and who knew how to handle their money. That's good, you know. Like like for instance, right now. The two dollar bill just they just put a, a thing yeah. about the news about the two dollar bills and and how they're gonna be worth this and worth this worth. Well, God placed it in my spirit years ago to buy up as many two dollar bills as I possibly can. Come on! And when I saw that, I almost ran around the house Come because on. I said, "Lord, you dropped that in my spirit years ago to buy two dollar bills." I didn't know why. Right. Let me get along. Let me get along. Let me get along. <laughs> you didn't know me, but. <laughs> <laughs> as, look, 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 as one of my, my folks, I don't take care of grown men. <laughs> I don't take care of grown men. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but put in my spirit years ago to buy a bunch of two life bills for AJ. I didn't buy it for me. I bought it for him. And just put it in the safe. Say, here, go, go. And so I'm like, that's how God would do it, though. Yeah, that's that's why I'm like, yeah, I know we, we, we took God out of the equation to a certain degree, but the truth is, God shows you true masculinity. Yeah, and man. so when you take him out of the equation, you really aren't going to be but just a fraction of a real man Ooh. without God. Right. So I don't have God. All right, let me. Don't I, have a father figure. I got. I got. I got. A, I got I, a I'm raised I got a in a house. I got mostly a women. Mm-hmm. I go to school. My teachers are women. All my teachers are women. Mm-hmm. So where do I go? What what where does a young boy go to learn how to be resilient? Let me talk to single mothers and tell them it is going to begin with you, but it will not finish with you. Yes. Tan is right when he says children emulate what they see. So the first time your two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old boy, because he's around you, mama, when you're getting ready in the room, and he puts his feet in your shoes or grabs and goes and picks up the lipstick, or try to put your pearls around his neck, that's when you go off. And I mean go off, go off. Pop his hands. Give me them pearls. You don't put them earrings on. You don't be walking around here in these shoes. You a boy. You establish that early, that there's something different about him and you. Okay, there's a way I think you can do that. Without being demeaning. Without yeah. being demeaning. Yeah. Because here's the thing. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. And yeah. so, because I, I, cause what I don't want is for people to think that you're we're going to traumatize the boy for something he doesn't know. But what I'm saying know. is set the standard you of can, difference. But you can set the standard by just, here's the thing. You ain't got to do all that. You can set the standard by just letting them know, you know, no, that's mommies. This is what, you know, young ladies do. And then, again, find you some, now that's some, the second some, part. some brothers who are, you know, good brothers who you can have him emulate. Yeah. You know, have some mentor time where they can input in him some of the things that he, you can't do this for is him. what you wear you wear what they got on you you know but you there's a way of doing so that. two things in that that's yeah, a way I, of I doing agree. that so two things that one is in this these days and times parents are letting their children decide <laughs> how to their own that you know their own <laughs> orientation or, yeah. let's just start with that right so oh, um that's that's yeah, let's go on in there I, let's go on. that's part of the problem that's part of the problem. I, I, the problem I have with that is you can be 
in your teens and in your early 20s is still really still discovering who you are. Correct. And so I find it hard to understand that a three-year-old and a four-year-old and a five-year-old has already determined, determined. who they, they have are. not determined. They ain't that, determined. That's a, I have a struggle a with it. Now, I don't have a psychological degree, so I, I can't uh, you know, back that up in any way. I just have a struggle with it. I know you have teens and young adults who are still Look. trying to discover who they are. We are in a All I'm saying, a we set up, yes. we're socializing people into this foolishness. Well, what, what I'm saying is, is that we're now in a culture where explore, exploration yeah. is permissible. Permissible yeah. and in some cases encouraged. Yes. Right, that's that's just where we are. Mm-hmm. Right, which leads me to my second point because I don't want to miss this because we almost out of time. We we've been talking about boys, but what about the girls? Mm-hmm. We we see girls like like we're seeing. You know, this this whole conversation started because mm-hmm. of a woman crossing what we define as a <laughs> as a male responsibility. Right. Well, you guys can answer that question. Because you got daughters, yeah, and the truth. But, but you see is, a lot of girls that's harder, quote unquote, harder. Oh, absolutely. So where is that coming from? Because the dad ain't there. He's right. every, everything comes back down to the dad. You know, He's right. again, you know, we talked about the mom, this is mom, this is mom, that. But the truth of the matter is, the reason why we've been talking about the mom is because the dads are not there. The fathers are not there. If the fathers are not there to teach her that she's a princess. To teach her that there are certain standards that she should walk in and that she should not accept anything or compromise those standards for no Negro. And as you're saying, you're teaching yours to already have this and have that and to bring this to the table so that she could be that Proverbs 31. Come on. I mean, I mean, it's just that simple. Is it really that simple? It is that simple because when you break again, it down, it's that simple. When you have three fourths of all. African American kids being raised in a home without a father, it is that simple. Look, let me go here. But just because the father's in the home doesn't mean they are good daddy. They may not, but how about this? You, when, when the father is in the home and he a trifling Negro, <laughs> you see that that's a trifling Negro. Because you grow up and you after a while you're like, that's a trifling Negro. I don't want nothing like that. You would hope. You would hope. Many but times, this is where generational curses come to. <laughs> that's what generational but <laughs> yeah, you know, listen, sometimes I make the mistakes of, of what I saw. That's true. No, no, no. That's that's accurate. That's, that's I true. mean, so just because he's there, we can't ama- automatically no, he, he's assume. He's got to be there, active, engaged, yes. and involved. Yes. And then he's got to yes. be setting right standards and right and good modeling. And sometimes, men, you need to go. I, I hate to be so dogmatic, but you, you got to go get around some brothers that are doing something right and get rid of the pride of, I ain't never seen this before. I don't know how to do this. Hey, man, look. How do I invest in this? Or how do I raise my son or daughter like this? Or how do I handle this situation? A lot of times, brothers won't go get the help that they need and just try to wing it and fling it. And now we got chaos going on in our people houses. don't believe in mentors. Well, see, they believe but in that mentors. ain't man code either, though. What, mentors? No, no, no. Asking for help. Asking for help. But you Men. gotta ask for help if you no, have a you need, mentor. You need to ask because for help. if you got a like, a, I got spiritual mentor. Yeah. I got uh, someone. I just asked someone recently, like a a month or so ago, yeah. to be a mentor in the legal realm. Yeah. And I mean, and he's like high high up there. And I just asked that person who I've been watching for years before I asked them. Yeah. Business. I got a mentor. Yeah. You know, I, I got a natural fathers who are mentors. You people don't believe in the power of mentorship I don't, it's, it's not even I, I, you ain't gotta take it spiritual I'm just talking about in the natural cause don't nobody wanna don't tell have, nobody what to, to people don't wanna receive people telling them what to do but it's not telling you what to do <laughs> that's what it is it's just you just said it yourself how how will you know unless you see it emulated so if you put yourself around successful people mm. don't put yourself around people who are not going anywhere put yourself around people where you wanna go and, and, and watch what they yeah, do. Yeah. You can just, you may not have to ask them a single question. Just watch what they do that you have seen is successful and it works. Mm. Now, I agree to that 100% of the time. But here's where I think when I keep telling you, you're the exception to the rule. Because even when you were growing up in the hood, what your mother provided for you was access. Yes. Right? She did. Access to people. She did. Mm-hmm. Access to places. She did. And most of, 
of the kids that are being raised don't have access. Yeah, they right about that. Right? So, right about that. again, if I'm sitting here and I'm in the hood and I got a few options, I don't have access to a positive role model. Yeah. This, this is what, you know, the, the point is, is that most of our kids can't even name oh, five Lord. married couples. Yeah. Married couples or five men that they would say, I would want to be like, that's not an athlete, that's not an entertainer, that somebody is in their own sphere, in, in sphere of yeah. influence. Yeah. But that's where the family has broken down. You're camp. right. Because I look at my son, he ain't got to go outside his family. He shouldn't. He got a whole bunch of uncles. But this is where the problem is, because if a boy can't look in his family and see a sphere of influence in his family of what it likes to be a man, and then a girl... And, 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 you know, we talked about fathers, but what we didn't talk about is I believe a lot of girls have become the way they have become because of private traumas. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And abuses. And abuses. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. And molestations. You can't negate that. Yes. And stuff yes, in yes, the yes, families yes, 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 that yes, ain't yes. nobody talking about. Yes, yes. That has caused them yes, to sir, react and grow up a certain way. Yes. <laughs> well, you know what? But boys are, uh, are traumatized And that's happening to the boys, too. It is. Boys are the same circle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's happening, and we don't talk about it. And that stuff also. Big auntie touching the little boy. Is, is perpetuating uh-huh. now. Right? Yeah. But the point is, Todd. The average child does not have the access that you had growing up. So they can't identify five people outside of the, yeah. in their family, outside of their family. They would say, I would want to be like. That's why social media is so pervasive, man, mm-hmm. because they look at that as the only place where they feel like they can see something that they want to be like. But then here's the thing. With me, I had a natural curiosity for just wanting to know stuff. Mm -hmm. So my mom bought us encyclopedias back in the day. And I would just read about a variety of stuff just out the blue, just spend hours just reading. They have the internet where they can Google anything. If they have an interest in something, they can Google it. But that can work against you. It can work against you. When you see all the other stuff that you can Google. But that's why... But you didn't have that. We can't get outside of... you are a parent... A model. You need to be monitored. Like, for instance, we have a tab on every address that Joker goes to on his computer. Because guess what? You check first... And then you verify. You got that right. You say that one take more no, time. You got to check first and verify later. Because you don't take nobody's word. Don't, don't act like your kid won't do X, Y, Z. No, no. Your kid absolutely will do X, Y, Z. So we check everything. And so and we put blocks on everything. And we're that and we're intentional about that on a regular basis. And if we see something off, we have a conversation Shh. immediately about that. I made because a you got to check it immediately. And so my thing is, that's what comes... That, it comes back down to parenting. It, it I, did. Say, I, I, I it, said it before, it man. Did. You got to get a license to drive, but you can't. Ha- but you don't like that. Just the other day, my <laughs> daughter, my wife's daughter in the house wanted to go to the McDonald's. Her and her friend, her friend was coming to pick her up. This is a girl coming to pick her up. I made the girl come in the house. I said, let me see you. I, I don't know you. My name is Mr. Johnson. I just want to know who you are, where you from, what you do. Y'all colleagues at work. They're going to the Black Mac. I said, y'all going up here. Y'all got 15 minutes. I'll see y'all back in 15 minutes. Accountability. So a lot of times what Todd is saying is absolutely right. We're not parenting these young people today. We don't have the extended family of the village again today oh, to village. create accountabilities and uh-huh. circles. And when you see that, like you talk about girls. So when you see her skirt is too short, come in. Let me talk to you. When you see she's starting to feel herself a little bit, come in. Let me talk to you. Ahead of time so that we don't create these problems. And we're not willing to do that. And that, that's just where it is. My brother came uh, up from Fayetteville recently just to take my son fishing. He didn't come up to see me. He didn't come up to see my my wife. He came up to see his nephew just to take him fishing because my son loves to fish. Mm -hmm. And he said, I just wanted to just spend time talking to him, just seeing where his head is. There it is. Come on, the village. There it is. Just making sure that he's on the right track. If there's something he want to talk about that maybe he didn't talk to you guys about, want to see if that's there. Meanwhile, we're out there. They ain't catch nothing but a shoe, a boot. That's what they call it. They call it a boot. 
spent <laughs> hours and hours and hours and caught a boot. But guess what? The memory. My memory. son, yeah, man. he got up early in the morning, my brother, to leave the next day. My son does not like getting up early in the morning. He got up when he heard him moving. And my, my brother had already gone outside. And he got up and uh, he saw me. He said, well, is that Uncle Robert? I said, yeah, he just left. But he's outside. Why you want to say goodbye to him? He said, yeah. He ran outside to hug him and say Come goodbye on to him. Here, man. Because Come that on, relationship man. is important to him. And that's what I'm talking about when I say about the dysfunctional family. See, we didn't have uncles growing up. We didn't have uncles. It was all girls. My mom's sister, she just had mm. sisters. But we had, again, people that she put us around strategically yep. so that we could learn how to emulate them. And so if you even, there's no excuse. Even if you don't have brothers who are good examples, hopefully you know somebody mm -hmm. that is a good male role model that you can at least expose your son to so that he can see it does exist. Because see, when I saw the drug dealers, I knew well, I don't have to sell drugs because I know I can get me, if I go to school and get my education, I can have a career like Mr. Dorsey or like Coach Williams or this, that. So you I talking. Knew, I, I'm just saying, I knew I could do that. Talk. You know, she, when I was in the 12th grade, she uh, let me, she took me to her attorney, her, her personal injury attorney, and I spent the day with him, Bashir, uh, 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 this is attorney Bashir, and I spent the day with him. So I knew I could go to law school right. because he's doing law and he's doing this and he showed me this and he showed me that. So I knew she just, she was strategic. And I'm like, if she's a 20 year old generational hood, uh, two kids by 20 and she could learn how to do that. Ain't no excuse. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. Um, stop proposing to these men. But that's what's happening. Stop, because stop. When, because your mother had the wherewithal and the sense to say, I'm going to provide a path for my kids. It doesn't matter where we live. I'm going to expose them to things that are beyond their immediate circle and what they see every day yeah. to give you possibilities in your life. But can I tell you what was the key? What? The key, before we go, the key was she had an encounter with Christ. Yes. At 21, she had an encounter with Christ, and that changed the whole trajectory of her bloodline. Yeah, yeah. and this is what church really is supposed to be. That's yeah. what church right? is supposed to do. It's not just the, the praise and the worship and no. all that. Encounters. It should be community. It's community. It should be where kids, and, and this is where Titus, the oldest, should teach yeah. the Younger, and mothers should yeah, teach the daughters yeah, and, the, yeah, and the older yeah. men should teach the younger men. Yeah. That's what Titus talks about. Yeah. So when you don't have all of that and it's missing in church, it's missing in the community, it's no wonder why women she propose. She got around a whole bunch of Naomi's. Yeah. That's what's got to happen. And they taught Ruth what she needed to know <laughs> in order to be did successful. Did Naomi tell her or did Naomi she tell her? Naomi told her. Told her. Get to the edge of the bed. Come and, on. And, and, and kneel down. My God. Today. So I'm just saying, man, is, so we can I know we we took God out of the conversation, but that's the problem. We're taking God out of society, and now we're getting what we got. You 100 percent right, and we got to end on that because <laughs> we, we got to go. This show has been great. We want to thank everybody for checking our show out today. W H O V YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, our podcast. Thanks to Jason Covington as always, producer extraordinaire for yeah. our show. Stay tuned for future crew shows this one was fire today go to our facebook page our youtube page leave a comment and let us know what you think about our shows topics you want to hear all that kind of stuff we do check that and we will get back with you so until next time be blessed and be a blessing to someone else peace okay i hope you loved it as much as we did thank you for joining us for another fire show for the crew listen you can catch us on youtube facebook instagram and any streaming platform that you're using for your podcast share with a friend expand the family listen we're trying to do this thing with all of you as often as we possibly can we're looking forward to you joining us again for our next show